Hello and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at how we can use 3D printed molds to emboss sheet metal. Stay tuned. Okay, so in today's episode, I'm going to have a look at how I can take some 3D printed parts. So it's a design that I've made. I'm looking just to have a simple badge that I'm gonna put on the English wheel that I made. Uh, link, link up here. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in the mysticism of doing this, right? Of being able to take, uh, whether it's a metal part or in this case, a 3D printed part and to be able to stamp steel. Now I've asked the question for lots of people on, on YouTube that have had you know, examples of this on their channels and very few people will tell you any of the ins and outs. So I have no idea if this is gonna work, but you can rest assured I'm gonna give you every single detail so that you can do this yourself. No trade secrets here, just me and you in the garage. Let's see if we can get it done. All right, so to start with, I've just taken a simple design. So in this case, uh, it's a maple leaf, I know. Oh. Oh, quintessentially Canadian. Uh, it's a Maple Leaf and it's actually for my Volvo project car. That's actually the symbol Volvo used to use, but don't tell them. I'm sure it's a copyright infringement of some sort. Uh, but I've taken the symbol that they've used for the car and I'm using that all over the place for this just because I like it. It's a rondelle with a Maple Leaf in the middle. Uh, so all I did is I took it, I put it into Fusion 360. So I used Fusion 360 for all my CAD because I didn't know how to do CAD at all before I started on these adventures. And Fusion 360 is available, it's free. And and it works great uh, and all I did is I drew the square I imported the shape right I extruded the shape in this case three millimeters so an eighth of an inch I then took that extruded shape and literally drew another square and then you press it in the computer I'm not going to show you this in the computer that's boring so I just press one into the other and then I just took this corresponding so I took the shape that the male die essentially left over and then I just pushed the walls back right so I just gave it some relief and in this example I gave it about a millimeter worth of relief because that's about the material thickness that I'm going to use and I have no idea how to do this so if it works great if it doesn't work well we'll be back to tell you about another one that we're going to make right away now the material I'm 3d printing with in this case sorry it's white so it's not going to show up really great on camera but it's just some leftover pet g that I had from I had a two kilo spool of this pet g and I just have a little bit at the end and I thought this would be right and I used in this example so just for those that are interested in print settings uh 75 percent infill this is with a 0.6 nozzle so i sort of specialize in making bigger things with my 3d printer not small little tiny things so i use bigger nozzle sizes so a 0.6 mil nozzle uh 75 infill it is printed on a heated bed obviously it's pet g you kind of need to do that i did use ironing and all that stuff i'm gonna have to flatten it off in order to make it work i didn't care too much about the surface finish um, i'm using a big nozzle here just to get it done and we'll see how it works Oh, if it doesn't work, I may try. I've got some other stronger materials in um, in my collection for my 3D printer, and I also print always with hardened uh, steel nozzles, so I can print abrasive materials as well. Uh, again, this is just waste material. It's just for a test piece to see if we can get this to work. Uh, so who knows? So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to attach. So first, I'm going to prep these dies. So we're going to sand them off nice and smooth, deburr them all the way around, make sure they fit nice. I didn't put any registration in the die. So before people start screaming at me about that, I know I can do that. But I've got lots of this leftover 3 8 plate. So this 10 mil plate, uh, tons of it, I have like meters of it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just adhere those plastic parts uh, to the plates and I'm going to have registration on the plates. So I'll show you that. That's pretty straightforward. And if I just line the edges of those up, which is easy enough to do. So I line those edges up, glue them down just with a little bit of five minute epoxy, and then we should be able to make it work. So let's quit talking, get back to work. Well, given the size of the nozzle that I typically use to 3D print these things, that you know, these ones were done with a 0.6, which I consider fine. I usually am printing oh, with a one millimeter nozzle, so I kind of hose the plastic on. Um, they're going to need a fair bit of deburring and, and playing around with after. I use the 0.6 because it can more than adequately render the detail, but gives me good wall thickness and strength. So that's why, you know, I use that one. Uh, so anyway, everything needs to be flattened off a little bit. That permagrit 
block. So that's the aluminum block over there with that sort of gold color on the top. It's like a permanent sandpaper that I've used for composites. Boy, does it ever work good for sanding the plastic. So plastic is usually pretty gummy. It gums up the, the material and that permagrit, geez, it seems to work really well. So I just used the 120 grit side and then rolled all the parts through at 180 grit just to smooth them off. And then I'm just getting in there again with some these are all Noga tools that I've got. I bought a used kit uh, and they're perfect for just taking the little, you know, making sure those edges are just broken. Um, it's important, I think, just to not put too much pressure. The sharper that edge, the more pressure will be exerted on the edge. So I want to just round it over a bit, not too much. And just make sure that the lines were all crisp. I also, for those that are interested in print settings, I do not use the setting where it randomly places the starts and stops. I actually wanted the starts and stops to all be in the same location so that it makes a blob. So there's a blob right there. I'm working it. Uh, I know where it is. I just go in and, and nip it out of there and then go ahead and sand it up smooth. So I got all the edges, all the sides, everything smooth. This didn't take all that long. I mean, I chopped a bunch of the footage here but um, then we get on to making the press so that was that was enough of that a little bit of marker uh, I didn't take any time cutting the blanks I didn't care this is for a press I hope to be able to use this press for quite a number of dies that I'd like to make uh, to build things so just uh, again taking that spotting drill in there it's just a center drill. I just find it works really great for this kind of stuff. I've used them for like my entire life. Uh, and that's a half inch drill, just pounding the hole in there, one stop shopping, and then moving up to the to the five eighths. So with that five eighths drill, you're gonna see me just uh, reverse the drill right there. So I just turn it backwards to center it in the hole, and then lock it down to the table and go ahead and drill that hole out. And then I fit it up. A little bit of five eighths rod fits nice and tight in the hole. Right, so just mark it up, cut the plugs. There you go, press made, no big deal. Uh, it fit a little bit tight at the end, so I had to sort of tap it in there, make sure it was nice and flush, tack it up, and then uh, tap it apart. And then all I did was just run a reamer through to tidy up the holes and make sure it would all work. Uh, then I went looking for springs, I had valve springs. I had all kinds of springs in the shop. And then I have a bag of those you know, random cheapo springs you buy, and they work great. Okay, so I've just ground the, the tacks off the bottom of the plate and then given myself a little surface here to adhere the dies to. Okay, so there's the, the dies again. They've all been prepped. I've just relieved all of the corners and edges uh, very carefully, sanded them flat, relatively speaking. Uh, again, we don't know if this is going to work. So I've just got some, some five minute epoxy. This is a particularly good five minute epoxy from Smooth On. Again, no sponsorship, so we'll cover up that logo. And uh, I've got some springs just out of a, a bag of random springs that I bought. And you can see how the whole system works. Okay, so that's going to press down nicely here. There's no Basically, when you drill those five eighths hole with a standard drill, I I did run the um, I did run a reamer through it just to make sure it was to size. I could put the reamer through it by hand, so just like everything, no drill press can drill a proper sized hole. So they're a little oversized, anyways, which is just fine. It's what you want. What they're not is sloppy, right? So even though I've got lots of zip here, there's not really much to it. I mean, it could rock potentially. Uh, given the symmetry of the die, I'm not too worried about that. And that's just there to push it back up, give me some relief. Okay, so we'll, with this stuff ground, we're going to mix up the epoxy. We'll take the springs out, so I don't want them doing that. I want them springing. I'm going to set these very carefully in. Actually, I'm going to set it in the other way around, I think. Uh, I might set it in this way. Set it in this way around. Line it up set it in put the glue on it and then very carefully just lower it onto it and it shouldn't move now, I've practiced the move a couple of times uh, so hopefully this works out okay it's also really really cold in Canada today it's uh, 40 below outside that's degrees Celsius which means it doesn't even matter for degrees Fahrenheit it's the same thing it's awful cold uh, so I've had these inside the furnace is probably gonna go all day just so we don't die 
and I will have to warm this stuff up with a torch just to make sure it, it's actually warm enough to have the uh, epoxy do its thing. You probably don't need to do that step. Um, I guess it's a Canadian trope, right? Like it's always cold here, but it's always cold here. First up, a little bit of wax and grease remover just to take care of any dirt, dust, or garbage that's on there. And then out comes the torch, and then you find out how much moisture is actually <laughs> in your metal. So it sweats it all out of there. You get it. I just brought it up to a little bit above sort of room temperature. You can still put your hand on it. It'll stay warm for long enough. And then away we go. So now it's time to make up the blanks. I went down to my hardware store. They had this sheet aluminum. It's about 0.6 of a millimeter, about 23 thou thick. I have no idea what the alloy is. I cut some three inch uh, blanks out of it and then it was hard. So I just did the thumb test. If you try to move it with your thumb and it doesn't move, it's and it's that thin, uh, it means it's hard. So then <laughs> yeah, I just throw a little bit of Sharpie on it and hit it with a torch until the Sharpie comes off because that's about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about the annealing temperature here. So it's now in a softened state. And I also cut out a couple of blanks of some 20 gauge steel that I had in the shop just to see if it would work. Again, I had, you know, I'd love to know if I could do this uh, with steel and we'll find out. Okay, so we're set up here on the press. I've had to just use a little riser and then I've got a one inch uh, aluminum block here on the top. And um, I'm just gonna zoom you in. Anyone else nervous? I know I am. Okay, so you can now see the die there in the middle, almost. As good as anything can ever show up. Let's have a look. Who knows how it'll work, folks? I've never done this before. A lot of stuff I do on this channel I've never done before. That's why it's out there. Hmm. Just need a pokey stick. To shift it around. Clearly not suitable for production. Not centered. We'll unleash the uh, 10 Chinese tons on this and see how it works. See if it works. It might explode any second now. Who knows? I'm not going to pay too much attention to it. Going to go slowly. The gauge is creaking away pretty good. Of course, this press can no more exert 10 tons than I can jump tall buildings with a single bound. Mm, a bit of a waviness to it. Keep going a little deeper here. If I only get one out of it, I only need one. So I'm perfectly happy with that. Almost down all the way around. Oh, it's pretty good. That's a little under five. And we'll see. Up she comes. Oh, it may have worked. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's my first effort. Gee, I'll take that. That's pretty good. I'll, I'm gonna press the other one and see if I can get it to press down a little tighter. And then of course I put this one in upside down. <laughs> oh, that's great. You see it's gathering some metal out of here to, to make the draw, but the center part's looking good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. No cracking. That's what I was expecting it to do is to crack. Okay, so I'm going to put the next one in the right way around, right? Which is the good material, the part that I worked hard on, has to go down. Duh. The die appears to have survived, like, no real issue. 
All right, let's do another one. Look for my alignment marks, make sure I'm right here. Okay. Let's see if this one's a keeper. Well, is this not fun? This is a good way to spend a day. Just going up on it slowly. So I did before. It's already most of the way down. This may be able to do the steel. I don't know, folks. Brought it to about this level before. And go a little further past it. Just to give it a full crunch. Try to make it to that first five. Whatever that is. That says US tons. Five. Uh, I wasn't aware US tons were an imaginary unit. All right. Should be able to get it in focus. We'll take a closer view uh, later. But that'll look pretty cool on the side of a machine, right? If I can get this a little bit of a uh, area out here planished out, or I might just cut it around and then put some tape on it. I don't know. Yeah, happy with that. So aluminum works. Steel, 20 gauge steel. Let's see what we can do. I expect this is gonna be uh, obviously a lot harder to do. I mean, it'll do something. Kind of has to, doesn't it? Well, it's about a half of the way. Oh, I don't know if I've ever had this thing down that far. Oh, that's pretty good though. It's leveled out. About six tons. It probably needs more than that. Yeah. <laughs> so in the steel, yeah. First the die is getting a little bit rounded. The edges of the die are getting all rounded out. I don't know if you can you can see that pretty easily here. So on the steel, we're gonna call that a fail. I think we need something a lot harder here. It's just too soft to get it to press. But on the aluminum, we're gonna give that a big thumbs up. That works. Okay, so we're back over. We're just gonna planish out the ripples on the edge and this is the one that I did, the second one that I did, that I thought was so good. And then I noticed it did rip. All right, so we've sheared the edges of the leaf. Never going to be able to see those. So we've just ripped them out a little bit, which means garbage. So the first one where I pressed it upside down, that's the one that we now have to save. So what we're gonna do now is, again, this is the material here. I could pre-stretch this just a little bit, right? It is a pretty deep draw. If I was doing it again, maybe with the steel, I think I would pre-stretch it. But I think with the steel, I just need a harder dye material. So I'd have to have the piece water jet or something and then be able to glue it down. That'll work just fine, I think. Anyway, so I'm just gonna planish out these edges uh, on my railway tie here. Again, you gotta remember it's aluminum and it's pretty thin, so it does not take a hit. I'm literally just raising the hammer and then dropping it and no more. Live with it. Again, when I when I did my railway tie, I left one side reasonably sharp and the other side I put a radius on it, so it's come in very useful for this kind of thing. Really? 
really wish I'd, really wish I'd done that the right way around the first time. Oh well. Okay, we're gonna sand this up, get it all finished nice, and that's gonna be done. So with a little bit of marker to give me a sort of sight line, I then set up the dividers and then very carefully, I was so timid with this, I didn't want to scratch the remaining you know, area right up near the edge where the draw was. So I was very, very carefully, it's almost painful to watch, going all the way around and then make one rough cut to get most of the material out of there and then one final cut to clean it all up. Uh, file it smooth so that I make sure it was round and sand it. In the end, there was one scratch that went right through the middle of the stupid thing, and I had to work it and work it and work it to get it done. I did finish it up with the gray scotch bright, and then pop it back into the die for the final planish of that edge, and it worked just, there it is. So that one worked well. When we went past five tons, we sheared it ever so much, just a little bit. That one still looked pretty good. Now, if I was going to be producing a bunch of these, again, I would make my dies out of something just stiffer in terms of the plastic. The Pet G, not really the plastic to use for this. And of course, for the 20 gauge, didn't really work at all. All right, so once again, that's the finished part. Gotta be happy with that. I'm super happy with the way that turned out. I'm always super happy. Uh, anyway, happy with the way that turned out. Okay, so to wrap up, we've got a bunch more little projects coming up on the channel. I'm still waiting for parts for suspension stuff. For those of you that are waiting for me to get back to the car, don't forget, like, subscribe, make the algorithm happy. Uh, let's keep on rolling here. We're gonna get back on the car pretty much right away. We've got a couple little just stupid things. I'm waiting for parts. You're always waiting for parts, but when you're waiting for parts, you can do any number of random things on your car. So I've got lots of little jobs to do. I don't even know which ones I'm gonna do first because I have so many of them, but I'm gonna take that opportunity while I'm waiting for big pieces. Let's get the little pieces done. Even though it's out of sequence, it all has to come together in the end. So doing it now or doing it later, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I uh, really appreciate all the views and everything else. Some people have asked about the car. I'm going to give you a rundown of where we are in the car in the next episode at the start of it. So we'll do that. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Keep your stick on the ice. I just see some aluminum over there I could have used. Grr.